Today we're diving into a natural remedy. It has stirred up a whole lot of controversy, but clearly a whole lot of interest amongst you pet parents. Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. I really want to encourage you to sign up for a brand new free webinar. Does your dog have a digestive health disorder? In this new webinar, I'm going to be covering all the possible causes, include my top natural remedies. How digestive enzymes can potentially help your dog with allergies. How you can finally help your dog with acid reflux. What to do with a dog with chronic pancreatitis. Think your dog is suffering from a food sensitivity? These are my top home recipes that can potentially really help. Top remedies for vomiting, diarrhea, IBD. The signs a dog might have a digestive enzyme disorder. We're covering all things digestion, and these are remedies which could really help your dog. The webinar is free. It's happening Tuesday, July 22nd at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can click the link in the box below to sign up. We're talking about this diatomaceous earth. It's told to be this great thing for parasites, but is it effective? Is it even safe? Is it something that you should be using on your dog or cat? DE or diatomaceous earth, what is it? It's a fine white powdery substance. Kind of really, really, really looks like flour. It consists of the fossilized remains of these microscopic aquatic organisms that used to live millions of years ago. Eventually it's broken down, turned into a type of sedimentary rock. And when you grind it up, it kind of looks like this. Looks like flour. When you look at the diatomaceous earth under a microscope, it looks like little tiny shards of glass. It's primarily made up of the mineral silica. And the way it works as a natural insecticide is these little tiny shards of glass they're piercing the exoskeleton of whatever parasite we're trying to kill. Be it a flea, be it potentially a slug, be it a tick, be it some other type of mite. It's actually very, very widely used throughout the world and it's actually used in thousands of consumer and industrial products. It's really useful. Number one, it can act as a natural thickener and looks like flour, right, or cornstarch. But it does a great job of absorbing things, i.e. absorbing toxins, things that we don't want to be exposed to. We don't want to expose our animals to. It's used when there's like toxic spills. Some of this stuff DE will help absorb that toxin. It's used in filtration. Some of the filters are also using DE, right? To increase you know, removal of whatever heavy mineral or toxin that might be airborne, that might be in the water. And lastly, it is widely, widely used as a natural insecticide. Currently, there are over 150 products that are registered and approved as insecticides and they're using this, they're using DE as their primary component. So it's being used for bed bugs, cockroaches, fleas, ticks, slugs, spiders, and even ants. Currently we thought it was a great idea to add more rhododendrons to our garden, but there's a little critter that is happily chewing on the leaves and what am I gonna dust the leaves with? Hmm. Yeah, diatomaceous earth. The big thing in using DE diatomaceous earth for your dogs and cats it needs to be food grade. So just have a really good look at the label, ensure that it says it's food grade, safe for external and internal consumption. Non-food grade, that is not safe to give to your dogs or cats, or obviously yourself. So what does the science say about diatomaceous earth? Well, there have been multiple studies and there's just thousands of anecdotal reports of people using diatomaceous earth and it is especially effective against external parasites. Fleas, ticks, lice, mites, even bed bugs. One recent study published in 2025, the use of diatomaceous earth to control the American dog tick. They say the diatomaceous earth, it was recently shown to rapidly kill ticks. We know it can penetrate the exoskeleton of the flea, killing the flea. We know it's really effective against mites and there's hundreds of thousands of chickens which would be just readily infested with mites. And what controls them? This diatomaceous earth. So it's a great option for external parasite control. It can also be used within your house where you're sprinkling it into cracks and crevices. That's where the eggs are hiding out. They hatch, they turn into little larvae. And you've got the DE present there and what do they crawl into the DE? Penetrates the exoskeleton. So then you can interrupt the life cycle. So it's great topically in your house, areas where these critters are living, going through different stages of the life cycle, as well as sprinkling over top of your dog or cat, at least once a week to control fleas, to control things like ticks. But what about for these guys? 
internal parasites, worms. There's not quite as much research to back this up. The internal use of diatomaceous earth is a really effective measure to treat or prevent parasites. But that being said, there's a pretty impressive study done in chickens and anytime you've got a whole bunch of animals in a small space. My brother's a great example. They have about 100 chickens. So when they're living inside the coop, you can't help. Parasites love that. So it's easy for things like mites to jump from chicken to chicken for these guys to have internal parasites. So one study showed that when these producers are also feeding diatomaceous earth to these chickens, there was a marked decrease in parasite load, a marked decrease in the number of eggs. So it was really effective for some of these common chicken parasites. But what about for this guy, Mr. Cassian? Say he is to have a little critter like a tapeworm because he's been out hunting. Now that he hunts, the most thing he hunts is the little hair ties that run around the house. Hmm. Very common, our cats go outside, they consume a flea, they consume a mouse, they can get tapeworms. Hmm. Will this work? So no, there isn't the science to back this up, but there are literally thousands of people, and I've seen it myself many times, where people have said, no, I don't want to use the conventional dewormer, I don't want to use the Drontal, I don't want to use the Pyran, whatever. They don't want to use the multi-purpose, kill-everything drug. They're using diatomaceous earth, and the tapeworms go away. So when I see that, I'm like, huh, there's obviously something to that. So for many animals, it really does help. And I think the big way to think about this is, you know, thousands of years ago, we still had animals walking around the earth. We didn't have pharmacies. We didn't have veterinarians. There is an immune system that's present there to help, you know, target these parasites. But when the too many build up, that's when you get this overwhelming load. One of the big benefits is if you can knock down a bunch of the parasites, then the immune system can take over and either you can manage a few parasites that are there or kill the rest of them. And I think that's a big way of how diatomaceous earth is working. It's still like attacking the external surface of that parasite. Parasite dries out, it dies, but you kill enough of them, all of a sudden you get the worm level onto an acceptable level. Then the immune system can target whatever's left. What about the use of diatomaceous earth as some type of cleanse? some type of product that will bind potential toxins in the intestinal tract, remove them from your pet's body, make them feel better. I guess, is there anything to that? So truthfully, when I hear the word cleanse, I am my little like, hmm, is this even real radar pops up? But is there some basis to using DE, uh, especially if there's been some type of toxin absorbed and or something that's potentially present, i.e. one of these more serious heavy metals, like say you've got something like cadmium or mercury or something that's going to be in the system for a chunk of time. Could DE help in that situation? One of its big uses is industrial. It's being used as a filter. It can remove particles, like either particles that are in the water, for instance, airborne particles as well too, because the stuff binds to it. Think about like this giant screen that's stopping these toxins. If it's to be used internally in that situation, think of it something like activated charcoal. And they can act much the same way. It can bind some of these like heavy metals, some of these toxins that are in the intestinal tract, so they're not being absorbed, then pass them through inertly in your dog or cat's body. Let's say we just recently adopted Cassian and his primary diet was tuna, just canned tuna. So I know in that situation, he's gonna have a chunk of mercury in the system. My inclination would be to add in the DE to help bind that heavy metal, bind that mercury. It could act like a so-called cleanse. How to safely use the diatomaceous earth for your dogs and cats? Well, number one, use only food grade diatomaceous earth. And it's gonna say right on whatever diatomaceous earth you happen to get. I see right there, food grade. Then secondly, don't inhale it. You don't want yourself to inhale it. You don't want your dogs or cats to inhale it. When I shake, you can see this little cloud of fine white powder. That's the silicon. It can be quite irritating to the lungs. Fortunately, we are dealing with food grade. It's only 2% silica, but still it can be somewhat irritating. So you want to make sure it's either mixed into something, it's mixed into water, it's mixed into food. So what are the internal doses for dewarming? I would suggest to start one half a teaspoon per 20 pounds of body weight once daily. Cassian, he's just, he's under 20 pounds. Sure hope so. He'd be getting a half a teaspoon once a day. And by far and away, the easiest way to give it is by mixing it into some canned food or something soft and moist, then your dog or cat's gonna consume. So to give Cassian the diatomaceous earth, I would put in a bit of canned food first, Cassian. 
which you really like. His canned single ingredient chicken. And then I'm gonna mix in my half a teaspoon of dog tomatoes earth. And this actually is a good little task because I'm like, oh yeah, just mix it in. Will your cat eat it? Well, this is the moment of truth. Kitty, yum, yum, yum. Yay, he's eating it. So that's how you treat it. You mix up, put a half a teaspoon, some canned food. And if you're trying to treat a dog or cat with an internal parasite, you need to be giving this once a day. Some people do a schedule of seven days on, seven days off, and other seven days on. I was just doing it once a day for up to a month of 30 days. Generally, what you're trying to do is catch the range of a parasite's life cycle. So where you're going to kill the adults. It gives time for the eggs that are then present to hatch and develop into a little larvae and to the point where they can be affected by the Dow Tomatoes Earth. For majority of the parasites, you're looking about a 21 day be upwards of 30 days but you do once a day for 30 days you should be killing the whole range of life cycle of that internal parasite but how would you use diatomaceous earth topically say you want to use it for a natural tick and or flea prevention well number one once again get yourself some food grade diatomaceous earth number two get yourself a old spice bottle this was mm, coriander no longer coriander i opened it up and what did i put in it it's not flour that's diatomaceous earth. It's a great little how to sprinkle DE on your dog or cat. And what we're doing, we're just going to lightly mist Mr. Cassian. So we're just going to light me just a bit on there, right? You're like, just a light mist. So I've just sprinkled some. I make sure I'm not like made a big cloud of it. So I'm not going to inhale it. Neither is he. And then you're just going to use that flea comb to evenly spread it through his fur. All right. This is something, I mean, he's an indoor kitty. He's not getting exposed to any external parasites, so he doesn't need to be treated, but I want to show you how I would do it. So I'm just using this flea comb to spread it through. It's a good idea just to focus on the cracks and crevices under the armpits and the belly. He's such a funny cat because you love being groomed. Oh, and I was just doing this once a week. They're a kitty cat. Is Dautomaceous Earth this magic holistic product going to kill everything and solve all your insecticide problems? No, it's not. But does it offer some really good benefits for dogs and cats? You bet it does. External parasite control, awesome. Brand new study saying how effective it is against ticks. I mean, that's great news. Especially not having to use some of the more toxic insecticides that are working against ticks. For internal parasites, worms. Is it beneficial for your dogs and cats? In my opinion, yes. Are there a bunch of studies backing this? No, there isn't. But there are thousands of pet parents who found it to be really helpful, and I've seen that. I'm really excited to let you guys know we have a brand new product, Dr. Jones's Diatomaceous Earth for dogs and cats. We've ensured that we've got a great natural product, free of any toxins, and especially beneficial for your dogs. This is a really well-made, great natural product, which can really help your pets. It can be effective natural insecticide. It can also be beneficial acting as a dewormer. And on top of all that, we've really made it cost-effective. If you've yet to try DE for your dogs and cats, maybe you'd want to think about trying our product, you can click the link in the box below for more information. We really encourage you to sign up for our brand new free webinar, Healing from the Inside Out natural solutions for intestinal disease in dogs. Why the gut is the foundation of health. The gut allergy connection. Natural remedies for chronic pancreatitis. How to help your dog with acid reflux naturally. Homemade healing. My natural homemade dog food recipes which can really help. Plus, I'm leaving time at the end for a Q&A so you can get your most pressing dog health questions answered. The webinar is free. It's happening Tuesday, July 22nd at 5 p.m. Pacific. Click the link in the box below to sign up. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets of DE for Pets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Kitty kitty.